those who will go to heaven the summary first lesson James chapter 2 verse 5 second lesson second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 golden text St. Matthew chapter 19 verses 28 to 29 quote people have wondered why you have been asked not to marry even the young beautiful ones <clears throat> have, excuse me, have decided not to marry. Today we are going to summarize the Gospels of the past three weeks. Our first Gospel revealed that those who will go up to heaven never marry. They are the ones who go with the Lamb whithersoever he goeth and they will reign with him. The second gospel was, the, was that which asked us to sell all we have and give the money to the poor before we can follow Christ. We became sad when we heard this. The wise men of the world think that this is a parable those who will be rich in this new kingdom of heaven are those who are selling their wealth in order to give the money to the poor. Our Lord Jesus Christ used to speak in parables, but when he decided not to do so, he spoke in his plain language. The same thing is happening today. Moreover, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, comes as promised don't you see that the words spoken by christ are true how difficult it is for a rich man to enter this kingdom of heaven you don't enter by force when the scripture says that it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom those who are poor Rejoice and feel that the kingdom then belongs to them. They don't struggle to improve their status. They are glad to be poor so that they may enter heaven. This is an entirely wrong idea. The rich here means that although they are rich in their minds, although they are rich, their minds are not on the riches. They give freely to the poor for the sake of the kingdom. That is why Christ compares the kingdom to precious stones that one finds buried in his garden. He sells all that he has and, boils and buys his garden. If a rich man gives out his wealth, then he is storing wealth in heaven. There is nothing more pleasing in the sight of God and angels than distributing to the poor. God has promised that those who will inherit the kingdom and be his children forever are those who be his children forever are those who are giving freely to the poor in material things. All their minds and belief is in heaven and as they do not want others to suffer, they give them freely. I will show you why they act in this way and what will be their gain. You cannot enter the kingdom by force are true accumulated wealth. First lesson, James chapter 2 verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, heart not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he had promised to them that love? Brethren, hear what the scripture says. 
that those who are poor in the material things of this world are rich in heaven and are heirs of the kingdom. They do not bury their minds on houses, cars, clothes, etc. A child of heaven does not attach importance to any material thing. He gives out such things freely. And his mind is not there. A person who is rich in faith is a person whose mind rests entirely with God and heaven. In all that they do, they, they, in all that they do, they think of how to get to heaven. Their minds are not on children, clothes and wealth. God knows that everything in the world belongs to him. Therefore, you being his children can never be poor. Any person who loves God is poor in spirit because he is prepared to give all that he has to the poor. There are people who go about consoling themselves that they are poor. Therefore, they are meant for heaven. When they are poor physically, it means that they are rich in spirit because all their minds are on how they could get rich, how they could have money, have cars, houses, children, clothes and food, to mention a few. When they sleep, they always dream about these things because their minds are there. Do you think that anyone who loves God loves money? Anyone who loves God does, does not like to hear anyone complain about God. He is prepared to share things in common with others. His greatest desire is to do things for God and to please all those who are sad. He has no regard for money. He knows that God has everything, so he needs not strive for anything because everything that belongs to God belongs to him. Does a person who heals free of charge love money? Does a person who gives the words of God free of charge also love money? If he doesn't love money, what does he love? Can a man serve two masters? People who love God are wealthy in the kingdom. They are riches. Christ said to the young lawyer, Come, follow me, and you shall have more than what you left behind, plus eternal life. Therefore, don't rejoice because you will go to heaven if you are poor physically. Heaven is for those who have one mind, one heart, and one spirit in Jehovah God and can give freely. This class of people surrenders everything to the service of God. This does not mean that if you go to their houses, you will not see cupboards, chairs, motor cars, etc. But they, are, but they know that these things belong to God. They built their houses to accommodate the poor. With their money, they buy clothes for the poor. These are those that are poor in spirit. Second lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he become poor, that ye, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Do you see what is meant by being poor in spirit? Because of the words of God, because the love you have for God, you become poor in spirit. Who is the richest person in, in the whole world? We are like God. The likeness of God in us is wealth, power and wisdom. Do you realize now who you are? The children of God are stewards 
and storekeepers, it is their duty to give out from their father's storehouse to those who have not knowing truly well that wealth belongs to God. Anybody who calls wealth his own, whether it is money, children, etc., has no faith in God. Did we come into the world with into the world with children or wealth? Yet we claim that this is our child, this is my wife, this is my house. Empty and you came and so will you return. Those who realize that these are those who will inherit the kingdom. What is it now? What is it now you have that you didn't receive? If you receive what you have, why then do you puff up when it was all given to you? You pray to God to give you appointment. He gives you. When another person comes to you in, in the office for help, you drive him away saying, go away from my office. Are you really in your correct senses when you say this? He who is poor in spirit knows that he cannot do anything for, by himself. But God can do everything. Christ himself said that he cannot do anything by himself. For it is the Father that does everything. When sick people were brought to Jesus, he knew that, that his Father would do the work and heal them. Now tell me why your mind is always on money. You sleep and think of money and you see bags of money. If your thought and mine is on money, etc. How can God see a space in your mind? Do you think that if you fail to think about money, you won't have money? Some of you don't put your minds on money, yet you see people giving you money. All those who will move with Christ believe that they don't possess anything. Even others who come to borrow their things, never return them. Christ our Lord, dressed like his disciples, he did everything in common with them, so that he could not be distinguished from others when they came to arrest him. The children of God, even if they have houses, they sleep on the floor and give their beds to others without Caring. The text of the gospel says, Leave your wife, children, and relations, and follow Christ. They do not belong to you. Yes, this makes up the other class of wealth. Leave your wife and children to serve God. Let them serve God so that they may have wealth in heaven. Your wife and children do not belong to you. Let them go. Stay as if you have none. If you count upon the pleasure of wife and children, when will you serve God? If the love of children and wife fill your heart, how can you serve God? That is the reason why Christ said, that if you love children, wife, etc., more than me, you have no place in the kingdom. Even though our Lord and even though our Lord had a father, mother, sisters, and brothers, he left them so as to serve God. At what time did he ever say, As the firstborn, I must look after the others? Or why did you ask? Why did you not ask for my permission before doing anything in the family? Today we are going to tell you what you will have when you surrender all that you have to God. Any man who loves God is poor in spirit. Any man who loves his children, etc., is rich in spirit. Those who are poor in spirit, 
whose hearts and minds are with God will inherit the kingdom of heaven. God does not say that you should not have mother or father, etc. Because he has said, go ye and multiply. Whether you have father or not, you must realize that you have them in spirit. Now, tell me why a person should pray to God to give him a child, wife or husband. Do not put your trust in man, whether Paul or Apollos. Sickness, poverty and wealth belong to us. We have Christ and Christ of God. God owns all of us. Why then do we complain that we have nobody, no money, no houses, cars, etc.? We are the children of God. God owns everything in the world. Whatever God has belongs to his children. Therefore, we lack nothing. Aren't these, are not these persons owned by God? Don't love these things and put your heart in them. They belong to God and you. Golden text, St. Matthew chapter 9, verses 28 to 29. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit, in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that art forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land for my sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inheritable heart in life. Brethren, do you hear this statement? Haven't I told you that I will reveal those who will go to heaven? Those who have forsaken wives, mothers, children, and even their own lives for my sake will inherit the kingdom. And in the regeneration, they will sit with Christ and with him rule the whole world. Now, distribute your money, clothes, houses, stores, and wealth for the helpless so that you will so that you will have an hundredfold and eternal life those who leave all types of earthly things will go to heaven and rule with great crime and go wheresoever you go it now if your name is written among those for heaven after going through the first, second, and third lessons of today. See if you are among those for marriage, those who surrender their goods to the poor, those who leave their fathers, mothers, children, wives, husbands, relations, and their very lives for the kingdom's sake, those who don't tell lies, those who love Christ and God, and those whose hearts are with him, those who don't regard themselves as anything, those who go about preaching and teaching about the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ, those who don't mind being cheated, and those who regard earthly glory as nothing. See if you are among those who meet with shame and disgrace for the kingdom's sake. See if you are one of those who go hungry because of the gospel, those who work day and night, enduring all conditions of life for the kingdom, will have everlasting life and everlasting rest. See the small sacrifice you make and the glory it brings to you. If you, if you have these signs, then you have this glory awaiting you. Because you don't defile yourself with women, 
because you give freely you will have an hundredfold plus eternal life and you will reign with Christ everything will be changed but the words of the words and promise of God stands forever God speaks these words not an angel not Saint Paul not Saint Peter whenever Christ makes a statement he would say those words are not from me but from God think brethren what is greater than eternal life if we were to see the glory awaiting us we would readily surrender everything for this glory in heaven earthly glory soon passes away but heavenly glories last forever life itself is but a shadow the glory of this world is transitory you may be king today and tomorrow you are dethroned christ himself didn't want the glory of the world those who are from heaven want everything directly from god those things are everlasting those who do this gospel are those who will reign with Christ the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They will judge angels, trees, moon, etc. Their wealth will have no beginning nor end and they live everlastingly in joy and glory. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.